Yes, welcome back. Welcome back. We're back from another edition. Just because you think you missed us. Ah, oh, mate, this show keeps getting better and better. Just jump along, boys and girls, because you just missed another. You're going to miss another episode of the BT, Harry Keeling and the Kate and Mackie show uh, coming on board. Boys, uh, long week. Uh, we, we had a good first episode. Um, now we're back. Um, I'll start off with you, Kane, first. Uh, how was your weekend, mate? Thanks, Blakey, mate. Good to be back. I was, it's my favourite time of the week now, recording the podcast, so looking forward to it. Yeah, good weekend, mate. As you can tell, I've lost my voice a little bit, so sorry to all the fans out there for my croaky voice, but um, you can blame that on Collingwood, mate. Got a bit excited on Saturday night watching the Pies whilst having a few few quiet ones at the footy club with a few of my mates, including Harry Keeling. So it was a good weekend. And then it topped off on Sunday of going and watch Collingwood VFL at um, the Holden Centre against Sandringham. So, yeah, weekend full of footy for me, Blakey. Yep. And uh, as you can see, I don't know, well, when when this great man comes on, uh, he's got a very positive St Kilda fan, even though they bloody beat up the 17th side. That is uh, Harry Keeling. Welcome aboard, mate. Thanks, Blakey. Nothing wrong with a loss, mate. Doesn't matter how you win, as long as you get there, that's all that matters. Yeah, oh, Richmond would say the same thing. You know, we we uh, bet the uh, sixteen side. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, how was your weekend? What did you get up to, Harry? Yeah, it was good, mate. I uh, played footy down at Moorabah. Got a good win over the Lido, so I can't complain too much there. And then had a beer pong tournament. I uh, played uh, against Caden and all that. So. Um, then had to go and night nice and early to work, six thirty in the morning on Sunday. So, bit rusty on the oh, old Saturday, mate. R- very rumor has rusty. It, rumor has it he was still pissed at work. <laughs> hey, can I just ask, did you beat Kane in the beer pop? Nah, unfortunately, no. Struggled oh, a little bit. Struggled. Need to work on me form. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, mate. It happens to the best of us sometimes. Uh, before we get into the show, I think we need to. Uh, get something off our chest. Uh, two of our panellists uh, have re-signed uh, <laughs> the Moorabah Footy Club for 2024 and 2025. So, well done, boys. Uh, and just try not to beat up my beloved Montrose, and uh, you guys will be fine. Cheers, Blakey. Appreciate it, mate. No worries. Thanks, no Blakey. There's a fair bit of work going in behind the scenes to get the better tenant down to the club as well, mate. So stay um, tuned for that. I don't think that's happening, mate. Don't think Can't wait for Kelly to get down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, we'll move on from that. Um, so in this episode, what we'll be talking about is the Ashes fourth test review. That's a massive one. And also our fifth test preview, potentially doing a couple of changes as well in and out of the side. Uh, the AFL Round 19 will go through all that. And then, of course, the Round 20 coming up this week, AFL News, and for the first time ever, the Team of the Week. Uh, so, Dossa will be all Second over time, that mate. Well. Second. Second. But we follow Campbell Browns. Uh, one a bit there. Uh, but... Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we've got these local footies back again, with, of course, with Eastern Football Nepal League. And this week, we'll be touching on AFL Outer Race. Uh, a few interesting results there. The Fifi Woman World Cup as well, which is going really nicely in Melbourne and New Zealand. The British Open in the Gulf. The NRL Grand Final location has just been announced, so we'll go through that. The F1, and of course, the three famous segments that we have got in our uh, edition, and that is the Dossa Multi. I think Dossa will go through uh, his first one, and then he'll see how see how the results panned out, and then he'll go through his next one for this week. Uh, Blake's Bake, the new segment there. It used to be uh, Blake's Arrow, but now it's uh, Blake's Bake. Uh, and then, of course, Harry Keeling comes back in with his What Caught His Eye uh, in that as well. And uh, I think that'll pretty much wrap it up. So I uh, hope you're going through the ride. So we're going to start off with... Just the quickly Ashes. on the um on your Blake's Bake, Blakey, I had a had a <laughs> one of the listeners tune in during the week and tell me that you are... Stole the arrow deer off Caroline Wilson, mate. So um, I reckon Car- Caroline Wilson talks a bit of shit. So I reckon we got to put you above her, mate, and turn into Blakey's Bake. So Yeah, it looks all right. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, who, who was that listener? Uh, that listener might uh, get a shout-out at the end, I reckon. Yeah, we'll save that to the end, mate. We've got to yeah. 
got a couple of shout outs to the fans later in the episode. So keep the yeah. viewers watching, mate. Come on. You yeah, know how it is, Blakey. That's it, mate. That's, that's it. it. So we'll start off with the hottest topic in Australia, I think, up besides the FIFA Women's World Cup at the moment. The Ashes. It's coming home, boys. It's coming home. That little urn. For the fifth, fifth time in a row now, Australia has re- retained the Ashes in a great fashion. Uh, of course, uh, there's actually a song as uh, I ask you, boys, have you ever seen the rain? That's the question I want to ask. <laughs> Because I want to know if you've ever seen the rain. Who, so who, any... who, who sings that song, Blakey? I don't know. I can't get the artist up. But, maybe, um... maybe let them sing it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good one, though. Give us a shout off of that. But how yeah, good, boys. We've retained the ashes. Uh, of course, the rain was a bit havoc. Uh, but anyway, we got there. We pulled through and uh, we got home. Yeah, what's your reactions to that, boys? You can't complain too much, really. Um, we were in a bit of bother. Marnus tried to pull us out of it with his gutsy 100, number 11 for him, but I think we were in a little bit of trouble there, though. Not much batting to come. Could have been a potential series time game for England there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was um pretty poor. I thought day one we, we batted pretty well, but I felt like we left – a hundred runs out there. All, all our batters seemed to get a start, but weren't able to go on and get a big score like some of the England batsmen were able to do. So I think we were behind the eight ball a little bit with that first innings total, but um, yeah, lucky for the rain saved us there and the ashes is coming back home. So yeah, it was good effort. Yeah. Caden, I just got a question for you, mate. Yeah. Do you think Ben Duckett could have potentially drowned in the floods there? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's well played by you, mate. He's, um, I'll send a video to you, you and for the for the listeners out there. There's a video going around on Instagram. I think <laughs> Ben Duckett's probably four foot two, and he's standing next to the two biggest, tallest blokes on the team. That's in heels as well, mate. That four it, foot two. Yeah, it's, it's it's just sorry, boys. It's just funny how the cameraman just goes around, and does his work, and then you just <laughs> see this tiny fella. You feel like he's kind of like a, a spectator, but he's in full English kit. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's not good. But anyway, we'll touch on, I reckon, both sides here. I think England, they were all over us. Let's get it. But from an Australian point of view, will, will we be seeing David Warner uh, putting on the baggy green in, in the fifth test? I think he's done enough, boys, unfortunately. But, yeah, I feel like he's he's, he's done his, uh, enough to keep his spot. What do you guys reckon about that? Well, my hot tip from last week for the listeners that tuned into our last episode, I said Davey Warner will score over 25 runs in the first innings, and he was able to do that. Um, he got a, off to a good start in the second as well. So I think he's done enough for me, Blake, but um, I'm not too sure whether he'll have too many more series, whether this will be his last series or whether he plays one more in Australia. Yes, yeah, Harry. I'd probably tend to agree. I think he's done enough. I think he's held his spot, at least for this series. I don't know about ones to come, though. I think he's probably... He might have a couple more games in him, but I think that might be about it for him. Yeah. But on his recent um, on his recent article before, I think it was the Indian series or the Ashes, one of them, he said that he wanted to finish off at the SCG, his home ground. Um, so I think um, that's where he wants to finish. And... Um, I think I think we, we, what the Australian cricket team needs to do is get a succession plan, kind of like what a what a coach goes through. Um, like for example, we've seen it recently with Paul Roos with Melbourne, and now handing it over to Simon Goodwin, that kind of thing. So maybe we get another opener through the ranks, let them go, have a bat with Davy, um, and um, yeah, see how that goes. Yeah, because Usman Khawaja as well, he's thirty. 35. So there's a bit of a you know age going on at the moment. Yeah, he looks like he could bat forever though. Uh it was Mikawaji. He just seems timeless at this rate. Yeah. He's a good bat. Um he is. I, I didn't think he would uh do well in English conditions as uh, a lot of people written off written him off. So anyway, um so fifth test. Uh, of course that starts on Thursday. Should yeah, Thursday any, again. Do yeah. you see any potential changes to the 11? 
I think the only change you could potentially make is bringing in a specialist spinner in Murphy again. I think that's really the only change we can make. But I don't know who he is then to go out. That's the real question. Yeah, what do you reckon, Caden? Uh, it's a tough one. Um, I think going by how they bowled in that innings, I don't know whether they made the right choice leaving Murphy out. So I wouldn't be surprised if they rested a fast bowler, but probably probably Stark for me. Yeah, but the yeah, thing is, it is. It, it's, we want to retain the Ushers kind of thing. Oh, sorry, we've retained it, but we, we want to actually win by outright this time. So because we haven't done that in um, since 2001. So I think we've got to have our full strength side on the park. But, you know, you can't rule out, you know, Marsh. I think Marsh is in probably his best form he's probably ever been in. And, you know, we can't get rid of Graham because he's, extra, he's fielding, he's batting is probably what's letting him down at the moment, which is really disappointing because he's got a heap of talent and potential. Um, so I, for me, I just don't think they'll change it really, unfortunately. I don't think they'll um, – as much as I love to see Scott Boland uh, play – I just don't think they'll change their side. What's the um, pitch like at at the Oval, Blakey? Obviously, we played there in the World Test Championship. Um, Scotty Scotty Bolland played in that. So, do you reckon that they might? I reckon they could bring him in, maybe for a Stark or Hazelwood. Possibly, I know Hazelwood took five for in that um, first innings, but I just I just think it's it's a grassy pitch at the Oval. If we uh, we saw it last time. Um, as well, um, and you know, it could be a bit flat as well. But um, as you say, Pat Cummins hasn't even won a coin toss. Um, this year, this yeah, series. I think, um, I reckon Ben Stokes has done a bit of a dodgy on him there. The coin that they're flipping has two heads or two tails, so yeah. Well, it did happen in the um 2013 to 14 Ashes series when Michael Clark won five zip to Alistair Cook, so hmm. um, a bit of revenge, I reckon, there. So Anyway, so just a quick one. No changes, boys? I'm backing them to bring in a spinner. I just feel like they may need one here. Like they, like England that first innings, especially Crawley, just dominated. And I feel like potentially, I don't know how much could have helped, but a spinner may have caused a little bit of havoc at least. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm going Murphy in for um, Stark. I agree with that. I reckon Stark's gone this week, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Also, yeah. just a um, another topic to talk about before we move on. I read something today on Facebook. It was, would you rather win a test match the way Australia just won that, like due to a what? Oh, sorry, draw it due to a washout, or would you? Or when England won the World Cup in, I think it was twenty eighteen, when the ball oh. came off Stokes's bat and went for four, and then they won off a um boundary count. What would you, would you rather that or? The way the Aussies retain the Ashes due to the washout. I think it was bullshit to win to decide a game by a boundary can anyway. Yeah, when what's it's that's like in soccer they do penalty shootout, which is not like that's normal. It's not like they go they count back on what they've just done, which makes no sense to me. How you can win from a boundary yeah. count? I it, think it's it, stupid. It it really baffled me the fact that they had that rule in. Like who who thinks of that? Like surely you just play fucking golden six or. Fucking golden extra. Well, extra. Bring back the bring back when they had to hit the stumps, like you know the that in the olden days where they used to have to yeah. hit the stumps. Yeah, yeah. I I reckon retaining the Ashes, the one that you said, you know, that was rubbish. How they won that that World Cup, uh, but the way they carried on and they're still sucking to the day. Like this Piers Morgan guy, like I've never oh, heard of this guy. Like seriously, that who is this guy? Like, does, he, does he think he's like you know just coming here? To watch the Ashes, like this guy needs to uh, piss off, really, because he's he's getting on everyone's gears at the moment, which is not good. But anyway, mate, Piers Morgan, Blakey. we've won the we've won the Ashes, so piss off. Blake, I just got a question. Um, one of the listeners was talking to me throughout the week as well, and said he actually you actually remind him of Piers a little bit. Um, any <laughs> any uh comment on that? What do, what do you mean by that? Who? Oh, uh, he he reckons you're like a Tiger supporter equivalent to him. Oh mate, you know, like it, it's a it's a weird word, you know, like yes or no, like oh, I, I just can't put words into it to be fair. But whoever <laughs> whoever said that, um, 
I'll, I'll quite happily have a word with you if you want after this. Oh, I can so, give him a shout out now if you want. Yeah, who, who was that? Uh, Connor it was Walker? no, nah, Kate and Mackie actually. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Come on, mate. Oh, Sorry, come, Ray, come on, bus. Blakey. I saw that video of you carried on like a pork chop at the footy on the weekend. <laughs> Come on. What do you mean? What video? The, the, the on TikTok? Yeah, your TikTok. Uh, you you yeah. want to give your TikTok a shout out, do you, mate? Come on. Oh, mate, I was just happy, you know. Nah, you we love it. Like, yeah. oh, God. Move on now. We um, love your passion, Blakey. We love it, mate. Oh, that's it, mate. Yes, yes. If you want to see that, check out the BT uh uh, Tigers fan page. Uh, more info about that on TikTok. So yeah, it's popping it off actually. Got a thousand views uh, <laughs> on my last one. So uh, thank you for all the love there. How many um, of them were you rewatching it, mate? But no, no, no. Uh, once I post, mate, I just that's all I do. Just He's only it. got so many family members. <laughs> yeah. All right, enough of the enough of the TikTok nonsense there. Um, Okay, so then we're going to move into AFL. Uh, so we're going to go up to round 19, and uh, our great mate, uh, Dossa, the, the chirper, um, is going to go us through, mate. Thanks, Blakey, mate. Um, interesting round in the footy this week. Um, we'll, I'll quickly read out the scores for all the games, and then we'll just touch on three or four games that we thought were the, the games of the round. So I kicked off on Friday night with Essendon playing the Doggies at Marvel. Uh, Essendon seven seven forty nine defeated by the Bulldogs thirteen twelve ninety. Moved to Saturday afternoon at the MCG where Blakey's Tigers defeated Hawthorne fourteen twelve ninety six to fifteen five ninety five. Got home in a thriller there, Blakey. You were at the game, weren't you, mate? I was at the game, and quite frankly, this is uh, this is the way I felt. I honestly felt like walking over to Richmond Station and uh, going home early uh, at that game because. Oh, one, of those, one of those fake supporters, are you, mate? Well, mate, I stayed. You know, I thought, all right, I'll give him a chance and all that. And that's, that's just the number one rule in footy. You just never leave the game early. And I witnessed that firsthand. Um, but I'm just saying, it just wasn't our game. And, you know, and Hawthorne took advantage of that. Uh, I think at the margin was one stage. I think it was about uh, 40-something points at one stage. So it was just getting pretty awful. Um, for Richmond, and I don't know what clicked. I don't know what Andrew McWalter said at three quarter time, but it, it just felt like Richmond, like old, like the old Richmond side back in the, the Premiership years, and all that. Just were very hungry, um, and yeah. But I have to say, is Tim Taranto now the one top one fifty three after his performance on the weekend? Twenty lazy twenty four and three goals. Uh, I think he's moved up one spot to top 153, boys. What do you reckon? Uh, he's a top 10 player in the AFL for me, mate. He stood up when it mattered and got the Tigers over the line. He's been a great recruit for you boys this year, I reckon. If we didn't have Tim Taranto, we'll be 15th to 18th. That's how yep. I'm still <clears throat> I gather. He's been great for you. Yep. Any thoughts on that, Harry, or just mute your mute microphone there, mate? Eh? Or have no, you? no, no. I'm still here. Still still here. here. I think he's probably... Even this year, second to Dacos in the Brownlow so far, I reckon he's had a stellar that's a, year. That's a big call. I, have to I say. think he honestly could be. Um, uh, I reckon he could be, Blake. I, yeah. I kind of disagree because I think there's more, I think there's a bit more better plays than Tim Taranto at the moment. I feel like, you know, you've got to put obviously Marcus Bontempelli, who is creating one of the greatest seasons by a Bulldog ever, I reckon. Um, uh, and then you've got to go, of course, Nick Dacos, who's going to win it probably by a Flemington straight. Um, and I think you've got to go, you know, Lockie Neal, Christian Petrarca, like all these others. So I reckon he's about fifth or sixth in my eyes. Like, even though I'm a Richmond fan, uh, I, I think he's fifth or sixth. Um, probably, probably the first time I've heard you say something non-biased Richmond. Yeah, but, um, it's crazy. I, I'm going to disagree with you there, Blakey. I reckon Taranto's had probably the most consistent year for Richmond, but probably behind Dacos, he's been one of the most consistent players in the comp. You look at blokes like Bolton, who had a pretty slow start. He's starting to come good now. Um, Zach Butters in that middle part of the year was really hot. He sort of dropped off a bit now. Petrarca has a good game here and there. Um, the other, Who was the other one? Lockie Neal as well has had probably a 
more consistent year than the two I just mentioned, but not as good as um, Taranto for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've just got some – we could keep going over the Richmond Hawks game quickly. Uh, I 32 points down at three-quarter time, came back and won. Uh, late goal to Liam Baker, who I reckon is the next captain of the Richmond Footy Club. Love the way he goes about it. Um, Sicily, Lewis, and Wingard starred for the Hawks in what was a gutsy effort. Who got more out of the... Oh, jeez. Bit of a voice break there. Um, <laughs> too, too much singing with the flaming Mose and fucking Christian Lutkins. Um, who got Slow-mo. more out of... Slow-mo. That's a, one of our <laughs> listeners. Um, who got more out of that game, you reckon, on the weekend? You reckon Richmond will take more away from it or you reckon it's a good stepping stone forward for the Hawks? Uh, I think it went both ways, to be fair. Like, you know, obviously it's been heavily scripted that... Richmond, all they have to do is just keep winning. Yeah. Um, and they just showed that they they want to contend for finals and they don't want to miss out. But I think Hawthorne got a lot of experience out of that that win because that just shows in the future, you know, I think they, they the the young Hawthorne uh, team just run out of run out of legs. But um, if they get more experience under their belt, get more experienced players, I think they would have run over that game easily by you know, what the margin was at three-quarter time. They just ran out of legs, I thought. Yeah, I love that. Harry, any thoughts on this game, mate? Or Yeah, I saw something that Kane Corden said on, during the week, and even though I think he's the biggest flog going around, he actually kind of made some sense here. He said that he reckons Hawthorne is closer to a premiership than what Richmond are, and I'd probably have to tend to agree after watching some of this game. The first three quarters that they played was probably almost top eight material, you could say, and then they fell away. But I still think that that is pretty much correct. I think Hawthorne are moving in the right direction. And even though Richmond are still got top eight side, so I just can't quite see them competing for a premiership this year or maybe even in the next couple. It's a pretty bold call by you, Harry, I reckon. Yeah, just I saw still... it and I had to think about it and it just it's kind of sat with me and I actually kind of do agree with it. Yeah, I still reckon Hawthorne are like four or five years off being a genuine contender for the flag. Like, you got such good talent. But the thing that worries me with Hawthorne is they haven't got many experienced blokes around these young kids to help them. Like, they got Sicily and, like, Dylan Moore's still a pretty young player and he's regarded as one of their leaders. Where you look at Richmond, they've got a lot more experienced players and they have got some pretty good young talent coming through. Like, Ben Miller on the weekend played a good game. What was that young fella's name that made his debut? Blakey, he looked all right. Uh, I I still can't get his last name. I think it's Colthard. I think that's his last name. Colthard, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but he came on and he was just electric. I don't know what happened, but he he was just electric. Um, yeah, just the way he dotted up some players was just incredible in that last quarter. Maybe he answered McGalter's phone call, unlike Morris Rioli. That's why he played. <laughs> yeah, he reckoned he did, but you know, he, Morris is a young fella. But yeah, I mean. We look back on that and, um, you know, if we're smashing West Coast, then I would say yes, but because of the whatever the margin was at the end, I felt like it was the right call. And he just needs to own up. He made a mistake and get better. I think that's that's what it is, I reckon. Yeah. All right, we'll move away from that game. Um, getting back to the rest of the results, Carlton 21-14-140, defeat of West Coast 10-69. King Charlie. King Charlie. So that doesn't add up. 10, 6, 66 it should have been. Got to be carried away with the magic number there. Um, Saturday afternoon, Brisbane 9, 10, 64, defeated Geelong 7, 11, 53. We'll touch quickly on this game, boys. Um, second straight week, we've seen Brisbane a little bit wobbly in the last quarter. Is that a bit of a worry for them going forward, just being able to close out games? I would probably agree with that a little bit, but at the yep. same time, I'm just not 100% sure. I just can't get a gauge on them at the moment. Yeah, pretty tough to get a gauge on, I agree. Yeah. Just just um, Brisbane, you know, having losing Ashcroft was also a big one. Yeah. You know, praise to Ashcroft as well. He's, he, he'd probably be a bit stiff now, now that he's injured, because Harry Sheasel might take his award. Um, but, yeah, just... Brisbane, you know, I just don't know, but to to win against Shalom, though, who were in form coming into the game, mm. pretty strong performance. So, 
but yeah, Brisbane, I just uh, like I I penciled them in at the start of the year with the recruitment that they got um, for them to win the premiership this year, um, and I still got them to win the premiership. I don't think it'll be Collingwood. Uh, I can't, I'm just I, I think Brisbane have what it takes, but it's up to them on what they want to do with it. Yeah, no, I agree with you there, mate. Um, Calamarchi back in the side had a really good game, kicked a pretty clutch goal for them. Some that really, I took a little bit of a close eye into this. I didn't get to watch much of it, but what something I noticed was in that first half, Brisbane were dominating the stoppage game, and that's one area that I think Geelong can get exposed in. But Chris Scott made a move in the second half that caught a lot of people's eyes. I'm surprised this wasn't your what caught your eye, Harry, but. Obviously, you're not as smart as me, but they moved Tom Stewart into the midfield. Yes. I, I did I say that. that. I did say that, yes. That's very gutsy. I, I'm, he, he, I'm not going to say he looked out of place. He looked quite good, but fuck, that would throw your team around a bit, wouldn't it? He's your number one defender, of course. He's going to throw your team around a bit. He's your running half back. But I think we're starting to see that in a couple of blokes now. Mm. A couple of Luxon killed have thrown Sinclair up through the middle a little bit now. I think it's starting to happen with a few teams start to move their halfbackers into the midfield a little bit more. It's even happened. Nick Dacos starting to move yeah, to the Nick middle Dacos, a bit. Yeah. Get more midfield time. So I might start to see it happen around the league a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? But I don't it is. like I reckon they've got the back cover to fill Tom Stewart down there. I'd agree, yeah. Um, so maybe it's something that Chris Scott will put permanently. Blakey? Yeah. It it's an interesting one. Um you know, putting Stewart in the midfield. But I think that's where they might have been getting killed in the midfield. Um, you know, because like Geelong's midfield is just, that's what's probably their weakest uh, point of view for Geelong uh, at the moment because they've got such a star started our forward line and same as back line. But I feel like the midfield is just what is killing Geelong. That's probably why they, I, I saw on uh, the Herald Sun the other day that, they are going to target Bailey Smith in the off season, um, so that's why I see uh, with that. Yeah, interesting take. Um, we'll move away from that game. It was a good game. Um, next game, Fremantle played Sydney at Optus Stadium, which saw three hundred twelve four seventy six defeated by Sydney sixteen nine hundred and five. Good win for the Swans. Gets them back into contention for finals. The other Saturday night game was a blockbuster between the top two sides in Port Adelaide and Collingwood. Collingwood coming away two point victories in an absolute nail biter. Jamie Elliott kicked a, the winning goal. Um, we'll touch on this game, obviously, lads. Um, me and Harry were watching at the footy club, screaming out. I was screaming, <laughs> screaming the shit out of my voice. That's why it's fucked. Um, but Obviously, um, Port Adelaide are a very good side over there. Um, I think it's a big hurdle Collingwood have overcome here, beating Port at Port. I would agree. I've just got a question. Do you, is there anyone that can actually go with Collingwood at the end there? They seem to always pull off these nail biters. I can't remember the last time they've lost one. Yeah, like I'm being serious, like even into well, last year. I can the fucking prelim final on that. Oh, that was great. Last yeah, year. That, but that was great. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's, I don't know how they're doing it, mate. It's um, might it's... have to put in a might have to put in a uh, investigation on how they do it all the time. Mate, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna have to get a defibrillator soon. I'm gonna have a heart attack. I reckon. Yes. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, again, last quarter played well. Um. Jamie Elliott kicked two clutch goals in the last quarter. I've never seen someone ride the clutch better than that man. Um, yeah. uh, um, big... Sorry, Blakey. Yeah, I just want to you know, give give what I reckon. But do we feel like boys as well? Uh, Willie Willie Rioli does he deserve two weeks or what do you think about that? How he uh, basically dog shot it? I reckon. Uh, Nathan Murphy, do you feel like two weeks is a bit harsh or one week? I feel like it's got to be something. Like Murphy did fly around a little bit, but then at the same time, you get hit in the head, anything can happen. You, like depends on – you don't know how hard he hit. It might not look like a hard hit, but I think you've got to give him at least a week for it. Like they're trying to stamp that out of the game. Even though it's an open hand, like it 
kids are watching that and they're going to start doing it in local footy and then it's just going to cause all this shit. So I think you've got to stamp it out. Two weeks is probably fair. Yeah, I think he's lucky to get two, to be honest. Um, two's probably a bit generous, but it could have easily been three or four because Murphy hasn't had the best of runs with concussion. So he gets him a little bit higher, a little bit harder, and Murphy's knocked out and he's looking at three at the very best. So it's I just agree I, with that. I thought it was just a bit stupid from Rioli. And then listening to what that fuck with Kane Corns had to say about it made me sick. Oh, he's so, a flog. He's actually a flog. But he's a genuine two point fuck with. That's what he is. <laughs> yeah. And just want to say, you know, how how good was that though? That the, the game though in general, you know, the two top sides, as you said, and it, it certainly delivered. Um you know when you, I don't know if any of you guys have been to Adelaide Oval, but just listening to Never Tear Us Apart before the game starts, I think is the best. It, it reminds me, I don't know if you guys also uh, tune into EPL, but it's like when Liverpool uh, do their chant or song uh, before the game. Uh, I think it's like you will never walk alone. Yeah, like it is. That, that, that stuff. And it, it's kind of like that. Just the Adelaide Oval, do yourself a favour, boys and listeners, go down and I'll watch a Port Adelaide game over Adelaide. I know Adelaide, uh, you know, they are an Adelaide team and they are the other, the other Adelaide side. Thanks, but, thanks, thanks Captain. Einstein. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. You're on uh, fire here, Blakey. <laughs> just uh, Port Adelaide home games, just I reckon they're, they're very good. And I think whoever runs the Never Terrace Apart, whoever started that, uh, you've started off something that draws interstate people to games. Showdown this week, Blakey. Uh, oh, yeah, that's going to be massive too. going to be huge. I think it, I think it, it is a Port Adelaide uh, home game this week. No, it's not. It's an Adelaide. Adelaide, is it? Yeah, okay. So Adelaide, yeah, it's uh, big difference between those two stadiums. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like the just the uh, before the game, though, that's what I mean. Back kind of stuff. So it's just going to be what Adelaide do, but I don't know what they do. So anyway, moving on. Yeah, on to the next. Um, We've got GWS and Gold Coast. So GWS, 40-point winners there, 15-13, to 9-9, to nine, nine, sorry, 63. Um, Blakey, how did your roughy go, mate, in the Gold Coast there? No good, mate. No, no good. Uh, I felt like they could have gone back-to-back wins, but... I think we all have to say it, boys, but I think Gold Coast season uh, is officially over. Um, yeah, I think I'd have to agree. And I love how your roughy was a $2.10 uh, uh, on the odds. Uh, it's a big roughy, mate. I've seen some bigger ones, but... Yeah, I just felt like that. Am I back yet, like... boys, or what? Yeah, you're back, mate. Back. My microphone's shit. Uh, <laughs> I might just take it up from the arm. Thanks, Roger. Um <laughs> Come on, mate. Uh, keep up with the program. Uh, anyway, um, but but yeah, I just felt like um, yeah, Gold Coast just letting a lot of people down. They give you high hope. They kind of like your uh, Saints at the moment, uh, Harry. They give you high hope, and then when when the season starts to talk, that's when they uh, they go down the down the drain. I yeah, I like to call that blue balls. Um... <laughs> Yeah, she's just. I'm used to it this rate with St Kilda, so <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's just how I see it. So, but anyway, good win by the Giants. That's uh, six in a row, gents. So, Probably one of the are, hottest teams in the AFL at the moment, Blakey. I'd say they are. I think they've got high win streak in uh, Collingwood at the moment, so they're, they're playing some good footy. But let's face it, though, I don't think they've really played any sides. Let's face it, boys. I'm really sorry. Um, to say that because well, they've beaten Melbourne and they've beaten Geelong, but they they haven't beaten them up there home grounds. They they even oh, they beat Geelong there, but they didn't beat Melbourne in their home ground at uh To Park, whatever that ground's called. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway, kudos to them. They they've done really well to where no one really predicted them to do well this year. But well done. No, nah, congrats to the Giants, mate. Um, good win. Toby Green led the way as, again. He's been a fantastic captain for him. Uh, next game was Melbourne versus Adelaide at the G. Jeez, it was a thriller in the end. Melbourne 14-13-97 defeated Adelaide 13-15-93. 
Four point winners, the Demons. We'll quickly touch on this game if you want to, boys, or you want to skip over this one. Um, I honestly thought Adelaide were going to run over the top of the uh, the Demons. Um, yep. As uh, Dawson tries to fix up his mic, um, yeah. I felt like uh, the Crows were going to. They, they came home like a steam train, just rolling through. You know, Tex Walker at the age of 31 or 32 is just inspiring to see how well he's doing. I know there's another key forward from Richmond called Jack Revolt. Jack, take a look at uh, Tex Walker's book because he's having an absolute splendid year, unlike you. Um, so I think you need to lift a bit there. But Melbourne again, they just find a way, boys, um, which they've done against... Back-to-back weeks. Back-to-back weeks. Yeah. And... and these are the sides that are contending as well for finals. But I think Adelaide season, if they lose to Port Adelaide, do you reckon their season's over? It's got to be, I reckon. Yeah. It's teetering on the edge already as it is. So I think it's all but done there. So there's too many teams locked up on about 11 wins or close to that now with draws and all that. So I think they've, they've got to do something there. Uh, otherwise, I think the wheel's are just going to fall off the wagon. Mm, yeah, I agree there. So, um, just quickly, we'll on Melbourne, we've seen Max Gorn pretty much dominate the last two weeks. Does Grundy come back in any time soon, or is he playing a few more games for Casey Reserves? I I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back against Richmond, just because uh, they're not really a tallish sort of backline team, uh, and Grundy just always tear us a new one as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if he um, comes back in against us and. Clayton Old is another one. Like, does anyone know when he's back or what's going on? I heard another two to three weeks today, I think. It's the latest oh, on him. Just don't know what's going on. So Clayton Oliver. He's just a massive player and impactor at the Melbourne Footy Club. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, that's yeah. for sure. But is uh Nank Nankervis still out this week, Blake, for the Tigers, or is he back? He's got one more week. Got one more week. Uh, Soldo's been pretty good for him though. He's played yeah. some good footy. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what would they what the Tigers will do um uh, with with when Nick Kevis comes back if they want to play the two or you know get rid of Soldo. I, I don't I am not sure about that one, but we'll mm. see how we go and come to selection, I guess. Yes. Moving to the last game of the round, saw St Kilda take on North at Marvel. St Kilda nine fifteen sixty nine defeated North Melbourne nine seven sixty one. Harry, we know you're a diehard Saint supporter of that stupid outfit you're wearing, mate. So do you want to give us a one sentence summary or paragraph of the game? Uh one sentence. Or one paragraph, whatever you want. If you can uh, put a paragraph of words together. Yeah, St Kilda is shit and uh we got lucky to win. That's probably all about you need to hear. Um, but I think one thing to come from that is Rising Star is in the bag. Mitch Owens is winning it. I'm calling it now. Jesus. That man is a superstar. He's a good player. That is a roughie. Yeah. Now, I move, think it's move, a... over Harry, move over my roughie. Fucking... Who's yours, Sorry, mate? Blakey's roughie. Oh, yeah. Harry's, Harry's roughie is in. <laughs> Um, but, yeah, I think him and – he still just dominated that game, really. Brought us back into it. Really played captain's uh, innings, you could say. Captain, Captain Jack. Yeah. yeah. It's been good, Jack. Yeah, it's, it's been, been good. Yeah. All right, we'll yeah. move away from round 19 and we'll get into round 20. We'll, I'll go for the games, boys, and we'll go for our tips, early tips for this round. So, Friday night we'll kick off with Colling versus Carlton at the G. I'm tipping my pies in this one. A few, few big injuries out for Carlton, so. Yeah, I've got to go Collingwood. Just too good. But the form of Carlton's been pretty good. But I just think uh, they're due for a loss, Carlton. I'm going to go with Carlton. Got to back up me old man, old big bad Brendo. If he's going to listen to this, he listened to the first one. So give him a shout out here. Have another beer on the hill, mate. <laughs> That's what I say to big Brendo. Um. Geelong versus Freo on Saturday, Arvo at GMHBA. I think we'll all agree with the Cats here. Yep. Yeah, you... I think, oh, it's, it, it, it's a tough one because the Giants got them and no one really predicted them. So, oh, but just judging on Freeman's form. Is this Blake's roughy of the week yeah, here? Fucking yeah. hell. I'm, I'm being an army. I just feel like, you know, yes, Geelong are pretty good, but Freeman will just, they just find a way to. 
pick a game where they want to turn up. Uh, but yeah, I think I think I'm going to go Geelong. Alrighty, fair enough. Um, Western Bulldogs versus GWS in Ballarat at Mars Stadium. Bulldogs for me, they're pretty good in Ballarat usually. I'm going the doggies as well. Can't see them losing. I think. Uh... Do, you, do we judge a team off form, boys, or what's going on? I feel like we've got to go to doggies, but the Giants' form, though, um, who knows? It's up to you, mate. You're the one picking here. Oh, well, I said doggies, <laughs> but I just wanted to ask, do we feel like we've got to go, we've got to, go to Giants' form or Bulldogs? But I think I'm going Bulldogs, but I just want to get your opinion. So yeah, sorry, Harry. GWS are in good form, but the fact that it's at Ballarat, I don't see them getting close to the dogs. If it had been at Marvel or the G or something, even up at GWS, I would have tipped GWS, yeah, but the fact it's but, in Ballarat. But GWS beat Melbourne at, uh, at a mutual ground as well, so yeah, it could be interesting that one. Yeah. I'm anyway, not Bulldogs though, if, they, if there you go. Thanks for that, mate. Um, next game's Gold Coast versus Brisbane at Heritage Bank Stadium. I uh, went and watched a game at uh, this stadium earlier, late last year, I should say, and it was great staying to watch footy. So for any listeners out there, I highly recommend it. Can, can I just ask, were you actually watching the footy or were you just uh, looking at what was uh, there at the time? <laughs> nah, there's a fair bit of talent out in the field, mate. So, <laughs> um, But, yeah, Brisbane win this one for me. Brisbane, yep. Brisbane as well. Saturday night, Essendon versus Sydney at Marvel. This is going to be a good game. This could be game of the round. But... I, reckon it, I reckon it is game of the round. That in the showdown. Uh, yeah. Never too. I reckon yeah. Essendon will get the Sydney over here. I, ne- I reckon they need to fire up a cracker and get, get their season going. So Essendon will win this for me. I'm going to Swamp, boys. I feel like uh, Essendon just haven't been playing too well footy. So uh, I'm going for the Swamp. So... I reckon that will be it. But it'll be interesting to see what the uh the T V broadcast will choose this week on channel seven of Fox Footy because I'll be disappointed if they don't get the showdown. Because I think gotta be the showdown, doesn't it? Yeah, Has to be. But, but last night they didn't show the showdown um on channel seven. So they might actually pick the bombers game, which is I think is a disgrace. Uh, Blakey, I'll tell you in about two seconds, mate, what game's on TV. Why are you doing that? I'm going the Bombers as well. I was, I think this season's coming to a bit of a, um, what do you call it, crossroad here. I think there's only one way for them here, and if they win this one, they really set themselves up for finals. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, Just what we spoke about, Blake, the showdown, sorry, Essendon versus Sydney is on Channel 7, so oh. showdown not free to air. It should be. Probably is free to air in South Australia, but not here in yeah. Victoria. I just think it's a better game than the Essendon uh, Sydney game. Sure yeah, I, 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 I agree with you, mate. Don't worry yeah. about that. And what um, are we going for the showdown? Who are we picking? Yeah, that's the next game. I'm, I'm going Adelaide. Oh, be cool. They seem to always play well. They've won the last two showdowns. Um. So yeah, I think this type of win will get their season back on track. Like. We've seen lately they've been competitive in games, but they haven't been able to get the job done. So, but I reckon in front of a big, probably I'd imagine sellout crowd, they can rise to the occasion and get a upset win over the power. Yeah, I kind of back that, but you know you got to look at Port Adelaide on where they're going, and I think at this time when they did play the first time, Ken Hinckley's future was up in the air. So um, I feel like. Port Adelaide, they should win it, but Adelaide will make a run for the money. So I think I'm going to go with power, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Adelaide come firing hot uh, to to uh, win this game uh, as well. And when I was talking to my Port Adelaide when they came over, you know, I've, I've caught up with this Port Adelaide supporter. Just you wait. I reckon when you, if you can, listeners and to and our panelists. Get yourself a uh, Adelaide newspaper for the whole week because it's just on and on and on for the whole week. You know, it starts off with a Monday. They talk a bit of rubbish about, you know, the Crows have got a better list and all this kind of stuff. It starts from Monday and it will go to Saturday. That's um, the whole state just, it's like grand final week on uh, 
pre-match for Shardy. Yeah, mate. I reckon something that's on the card um, is uh, that we go to gather round in Adelaide. I reckon this podcast, what do you reckon? Oh, I rate it. We could do a bit of a live commentary. Yeah, a couple of live episodes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we could uh, do the pod from our hotel room, boys. Yeah, oh, yeah. as long as I'm not be. rooming with you, Blakey, I'm happy. Fun? As long as I'm not rooming with you, I'm happy. Well, well that's a bit harsh, mate. Oh, sorry, mate. I've just got my preferences in Caden, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I see the bravery that you guys have got down at uh, the Brewer Park. I heard it. You guys just can't keep away from each other. That's the mate. rumor. And I heard you go on the um, the opposition showers after the game at Brewer Park because there's, um, there's, a, there's a thing there. So story there that uh, won't be told on here, but yeah, I heard that little rumor going on down there. Yeah, always love a bit of privacy, mate. It's always better. <laughs> yeah. Um, on to the next game, then we'll go Hawthorne and St Kilda. What do we think, Blakey? Fucking well, fucking, isn't it? judging yeah. from the Hawks form last week and St Kilda's season, you might actually have to go to Hawks, but I feel like I think they've got an injury concern as well. No, sorry, St Kilda have Bradley Hill. Uh, he probably won't play hospital, against did Hawthorne. He? Yeah, he was in hospital. Yeah, he was in hospital. So that's a bit concerning. But St Kilda's form. But I might go the Hawks, boys. It happened last time, and I think it can happen again. I wouldn't disagree with you, but even though it's my Saints, Hawthorne have been playing a very good brand of football, and it's something which probably could be taken to St Kilda. They beat us last time. And after last week, I don't reckon last week we were coming back. If that's us in Richmond's position, I think we just get blown out and we lose by 50 or even 60. So yeah. I'm going to go with St Kilda because it's my team, but I wouldn't be surprised if Hawthorne made it closer, even won. Yeah, I'm going to go with St Kilda. Um, but I think it can go either way. We've seen last week with St Kilda only just getting over the line against North. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on down there at the Saints, mate, but... I think if you can string, if you can win these games, then you give yourself a huge chance of making finals. Considering the wins you banked early on in the year, but something's got to change. I think. Um, move to the next game, Richmond versus Melbourne at the MCG. I reckon this could be a game, another one of the game of the rounds as we spoke about. I'm going to tip the Tigers here, Blakey. I reckon they're up and about, yeah. and I reckon they match up well with Melbourne. And I think they, they did get, take it up to them here. <clears throat> they did last time, but I think Melbourne just kicked away. But they had a much different team than what they have uh, now. Uh, so I feel like I think we can do it. But Melbourne's just got a classy back line, classy midfield. But the forward line is where Melbourne are sort of getting exposed, I reckon. I think Fritch is a massive out for Melbourne uh, going forward. So I think I'm going to back my mind Tigers in. I feel like they can do it. And it'll be good to see where they can take it up to the uh, one of the uh, competition's best. I think I think I'd agree, and I'd probably go with the Tigers as well. I think they showed that last quarter they can really string even some premiership footy together there. So I, I'm backing them in to maybe play at least three quarters of that this week, and um, have Melbourne maybe struggle a little bit this week. So I'm going to back the Tigers in as well. Yeah, um, it's Kane's. Uh... Disappeared. Oh, I'm back. So, I'm back. You got me. Yeah, got you. Yeah, just no, just no video, mate. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. back. He's back. No, he's back. New headset. Yeah, new fucking mic. Um. Anyway, yeah, I think Richmond will be too good to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last game of the round sees West Coast versus North Melbourne at Optus Stadium. She's a Harley Reid Cup. Yeah, Harley Reid Cup. Um, tough one. I'm gonna have I'm to going to go with North Melbourne though because I think. Shuey's out um, with injury again. Um, he's a big out for them. So, yeah, North yeah. Melbourne for me. Going yeah, north as well. I think he's got some tribunal issues as well. Uh, I think he uh, got someone from uh, the opposition on the weekend. Um, That's Shuey, Shuey, was it? Yeah, so he might have some tribunal issues okay. uh, with that. But I think you're going to go north. Uh, I think they've been playing some pretty... Decent footy, but they just haven't been putting away sides. So I feel like I'm going to go north for this one. Yeah, I agree with you there. 
Same okay. here, I agree. Yeah. North would be too good here, I feel like. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that's the uh, rounds that we just did. So round 19 and round 20. Yep. Uh, we're going to change our way to some AFL news. I think I'm going to start us off, boys. Yep. Uh, yep. Hit us hit us with that, Blakey. Come on. I think, I think the biggest one of today when I was scrolling through my socials, as you do, uh, Tom Brown. Tom Brown. Tom Brown. Tom Brown mm, uh, has stepped away from Channel 7. Uh, I think that's a big one. Um, must have had a fallout there, old Tommy. Uh, all those fallouts that he had with Richo and Hodgie on the uh, the, the Friday night countdown, which I uh, pay attention to on, on Friday night. So that's a big one for me. Um, I think that's pretty much all for me. Any of you guys got any more footy news? Um, I don't think I've got any at all. Um, it's been a slow week, but yeah, it has been a little bit. I think it's yeah. just I've, I've got a fair bit. Um, yeah, signings today. Hollywood signings. We've um re-signed. I think it's now six players in the last two days. We've signed Johnny Noble for another three. Bo McCreary, I think it was another two. Um, uh, who was the other one? Jacob Ryan for two, and then today Cox for another two. Harvey Harrison for another two, and then Josh Dacos, I'm hearing, is um, going to be signing for a further six years. So yeah. um, pretty um, big contract news down at there at the Pies. And I think as well, uh, the other one is probably the Richmond Footy Club for the sixth straight year, 100,000 members. For the sixth straight year, they are truly one of the <laughs> uh, Victorians' most well-known club I think they're well over the small club behind them with Collingwood. So uh, it's always good to get 100,000 over them for the sixth straight year. So I um, feel pretty happy being a Richmond supporter at this stage uh, with all of our – I think we've got the best fans in the league because we're very loyal, I feel like. But I don't know what others think of that. But, uh, yeah, that's how I see it. So – yeah, I think that's all the footy news. Uh, Very good, Kate, Blakey. I'll take it from here, mate. We um, yes. sorry to yeah. interrupt you there, big fella. Yeah, it's all good, mate. Go for it. Um, one of our other segments that we discuss that we're going to do is our team of the week. Um, due to a lack of time last week, we chopped and changed a bit of Campbell Brown's team of the week, but this week I've redeveloped and sorry, we've redeveloped and created our own. Um. Keep an eye out on our socials, which we'll touch on at the end of the episode, but there will be a post regarding our team of the week, but I'll quickly read it out for the listeners now. So um, it's pretty tough doing a team of the week this week, but I reckon we've got it right. So from the back line, Tom Stewart, Sam Taylor, and Jaden Laverde. Half back line, Harry Sheasel, James Sicily, and Sam Doherty. Centre line, Josh Kelly, um, Jack Steele, Harry's mate, and uh, Bailey Smith. What was that, Harry, mate? Just I don't know. Something just started on my laptop. I can, you and your midget porn again, maybe. Yeah, mate. Um, sorry. Add it loaded up again. Um, half forward line, Connor Rosie, Mitch Lewis, and Isaac Rankin. Forwards, Toby Green, Charlie Kerno after his 10-goal performance against West Coast. May add 19 goals against them this year. Pretty good effort. Um, Lockie Schultz from Freo in the pocket. Our followers, Rowan Marshall, Tom Libertore, and Luke Davies Uniac. On the bench, Tim Taranto, Jordan Ridley, Luke Parker, and Marcus Bontempelli. And the sub, William Drew. Willem Drew from Port Adelaide. So that's it. Team of the week, Blakey, Harry. Yeah. yeah that's yep. a pretty good team. Good team. Yeah. I think we can't go past. Yeah, you know, some of the individual performances of this week. So, pretty good to see, I think. So, yeah. Um, so, I think we'll go through our next topic, um, which is a big one that we did last week. Uh, local footy. Uh, is, so, we talk about local footy in and around the league. So, of course, we will start off with is the Eastern Footy League uh, scores, updates, and everything, you name it like that. Uh, so we'll start off with is the, the shock one, I reckon, at the moment is probably Roville defeating uh, East Ringwood, 14-12-96, uh, the East Ringwood 8-13-61. That was probably my biggest shock. Park Orchard, relegation, I don't think that's going to happen now. 
Uh, Park Orchard's 13 8 86, defeated Blackbird at 8 11 59. Ball and 14 10 94, defeated Norwood 8 10 58. A shock one as well here. Berwick defeated Naval Park 9 8 62 to Naval Park 6 12 48. They're like just, they are just putting together a very strong season at this stage. 33 14 212 defeated Doncaster 5 5 35. And Tonkaster Rees, 17 8, 110 defeated South Corner, 10 11, 71. They might be the best team to get relegated, I reckon, in Eastern Football Netball League history, I reckon. Just the way they're playing this year, which has been pretty ordinary. Uh, mm. As we move to First Division, yeah, our division, uh, South Belgrave, do it again. Uh, they remain undefeated. I think it's now the 20th or 19th straight win that they've had. Uh, in a row, South Belgrave 12 10 82 defeated Mitchell 11 7 73. Croydon defeated Bayswater 12 7 79 to Bayswater 7 9 51. The uh, beloved Murubar Footy Club, which you they just heavily talked about a lot in this podcast, uh, 15 12 102 defeated Lurdo eight behind, so didn't even let him score. But a rumor has it that James uh, Young Egan, uh, the 100 gamer. Missed four behinds on the weekend because uh, Harry Keeling uh, decided to give one back and uh, missed the kick. Is that correct, Harry? No, I hit the uh, kick. It just wasn't a 15, apparently, according to the umpires. But uh, it was probably borderline on 15. I thought they might have given it to him, but yeah. no, nah, didn't yeah. want it. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to him for his 100th game. And also, it was a massive day uh, as well that we've got to talk about is uh, Scott uh, Dimitri uh, playing his 300th game for Moolback and Life Membership. So, shout out to you, uh, Scott, uh, proud Moolback man. He's now the fourth uh, Moolback uh, Life member uh, as well. I need so, Dimmer. Uh, well, under Dimmer as well. Uh, big supporter, ex president, captain. I think he's just done the loads down there in the Moolback Footy Club. So, well, under Dimmer. Um, when turn to South, again, they lost. So that's six out of seven they've lost now. 9-11-65, defeated by Beaconsfield, 12-14-86. And uh, this, this one down a big one, Quamby Reserve, North Ringwood, 7-14-56. Seven, seven, Drew with Montrose, 8-8-56. Eight, eight, so big one there uh, for North Ringwood because I feel like this game against Bayswater, this coming week could dictate who will finish in fifth position. So big game this week. It is also the Eastland match of the round this week. Go on the early crow there. Uh, but it is the uh, Eastland match of the round this week. So uh, I'll have a bit of fun down there at Bayswater Oval where uh, the Premier Grand Finals are at. So it should be a bit of fun there. Uh, East Bird, 8-12-60, defeated by Knox, 11-22-88. Waverley Blues putting in pretty good performances at the moment. 15 15 105 defeated Heathmont 7 11 53. The Basin 6 8 44 defeated Upper Ferdry Gully 4 13 37. Mulgrave 12 10 82 defeated Ringwood 9 15 69. And Baronia for the match of the round, Eastland match of the round, Baronia 8 22. 70 to Temple, so 6 by 41. So you feel like if they were to kick straight, they would have won by over 100 and maybe 20 points there. So good win there sorry, by the Hawker. Sorry to interrupt you here, Blakey, but for the last two divisions, was there any upsets just for a time thing? So oh, I, think, I think really he's just in Premier with Roval beating East Ringwood. I don't think many predicted that. Probably yeah. unfortunate. So. Yeah, um, there was a draw in third division between Fletcher Gully and Fair Park. Uh, nothing really much, uh, really, but Oakley District won, Silver won, and Warren and Donvale won. So, a couple of interesting results there. Uh, in fourth division, Forest Hill won, uh, Comfortably, Kilsyth won, and Churnside Park won. So, interesting there. Uh, we'll move to AFL Outer East. Uh, Couple of interesting results. Very. Um, Wari Alec came from the clouds to beat Alinda Creek, uh, Alinda Fanny Creek. There they won by seventeen points. Upway beat Jambrook, 
Uh, one and doing what they do, they beat Mumbulk, uh, packing and uh, did a delivery to me and Evelyn to say, "Hey, we're here to play finals, and uh, you better watch yourself, uh, boys down there." So, a bit of pressure going on down there from me and Evelyn. Uh, Emerald won against battle Mocker. battle for the um fifth spot. I think's yeah. heating up in that league, Blakey. I was yeah. Looking at the ladder up where you're currently sitting there, but Mount Evan, Mumbulk, and even Jembrook, only a game behind them. So mm-hmm. pretty comp- even competition there. Apart from the, probably the top two sides, I reckon. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Seville defeated Berwick Springs pretty easily, and Hillsville uh, did a demolition job over Belgrave in uh, first division there. Uh, and then second division, Powertown won, absolutely smashed the junk. Uh, uh, 27 15, 177 to Junction 5 10 40. Warburton smashed Broadford and Alexandra smashed Yarra Glen. So, there you go, that's your footy recap for local footy. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry if I was talking too much there, but have to go through a lot of those results. Um, any of you want to go I'm... through the next topic? Yeah, I'll have a chat about the women's world cup that's happening right now. And just quickly so it, before we start, I um went to watch Collingwood's VFL yesterday, and geez, Amy Park's looking pretty pretty good with all the advertisement and that there. So shout out to the event coordinators or whatever the fuck you call them, doing a great job. Yeah, we'll get into it then. So we have Australia getting the win against Ireland um early on. What do we think, lads? Good start for us, don't you reckon? Without Sam Kerr as well. Yeah, so what was the go there? Was she a laid out or something? Was she a calf strain strain in the training? So uh, she's probably got one more game, they reckon. And then two games, yeah. Um, but yeah, but it's all right because Canada actually drew with Nigeria, which is huge because Canada ranks seventh or eighth in the world, and we're about 12th. Nigeria, somewhere around 40th. So it's huge for Nigeria to draw with them, gets us a bit of uh breathing room away from Ireland and Nigeria, so and Canada as well, I guess. So it's a good start. Um no real major upsets from what I can see, but USA getting there, um getting started with a three nil win and then they've got Netherlands next. So that'll be a good contest between the two of them. Um Brazil are currently up one nil against Panama at the moment and that should be an easy win for Brazil really and it's really about it. Nothing major has happened. Australia's next, next game against Nigeria, is it, Harry? Yeah, against Nigeria, I believe. Old Thursday? back us to win. Th- is that on Thursday? I think, I think it's it Wednesday is. or Thursday, one of those two. Yeah, Thursday night, yeah. I think we're just waiting for an upset to happen. I think that's what uh, everyone's really waiting for. Really. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm hoping if we get the win against Nigeria, that cements us in there. We can't get knocked out of the top two. So I I win against Nigeria and I'd be happy. With Sam Kerr still not having played yet either. Yeah, it'd be a good effort, wouldn't it? For it'd sure. It'd be a good start. Yep. That's all really we've got for the FIFA World Cup. We'll speak more about it when they get start to get into the knockout stages and um start to give our predictions a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Move on to the Gulf now. Um, we've got the British Open that just happened, or the Open as they call it, the Open Championships. Uh, Brian Harmon winning his first major. Lefty. What do you reckon, Caden, as a fellow lefty? Fellow lefty like myself, mate. It's great to see um, probably one of not many lefties getting a win. So um, There's actually two winners on the weekend. Yeah. Lefties in the I, Barracuda, is it called? The Ashkai Biardi. I can't know how to say his name, but yeah. right, got his tour card from that as well. Did see that. It's great. Great for golf. So, but yeah, no, it was a pretty interesting event. Um, obviously, tough conditions at Royal Liverpool. Um, Brian Harmon played fantastically. I think he led for rounds two, three, and four. Um, one by six shots in the end. Yeah, one by six shots. Coming in second spot, though, Australian Jason Day. Great to see him back at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, hopefully, he can stay injured free and have a good run at it and hopefully win his second major. That would some, be good. Sometime down the track. But, yeah, um, not too much to add into the into this. It was pretty... Uh, big Johnny Rahm made a late comeback in round three, shooting eight under. And yeah. thought he might go on and give Harm and a little bit of run for his money, but no. Nah. Tough last round. It was absolutely pissing down. Though. Oh, wasn't it? Yeah. So... Um, yeah, one under for John Rahm in the last round. So, but yeah, nah, 
We move, I think, coming up in um, the PGA Tour on the 10th of August is a FedEx Cup Finals begin. That'll be huge. Um, we'll get more golf talk then. Yeah, but as it stands, we got Ram, Shefflin, and McElroy, the top three for the FedEx Cup. So three big dogs battling it out for the ultimate goal of the FedEx Cup. It's, it's a shit sport golf anyway. So I can't says, it says the bloke that's about to talk about F1. Yeah. Yeah, Bob. Anyway, uh, before we actually get into F1, today the uh, the NRL commission team and committee came up with a the grand final for the NRL location. So that will be played at a core stadium. Boys, can we go through who we reckon will be in that decider? Uh, I've got no clue. I'm just going to go with Penrith and Storm. I'm going Penrith and Bron- Brisbane Broncos, mate. On the top two, mate. I think, I think yeah. Yeah. I think they've been the two best side. Anyway, I, I know none of these boys really give a rat's ass about this, but the F1 happened overnight, and you wouldn't believe it. Max Verstappen. He's done it again for the 12th time this year. So it's incredible. I think the world record, I think he's already done it already this season. Um, it's going pretty good for him. So, right well up to you, Max. I think that's what we really have to cover. But an Aussie actually came uh, in in pole position, so he came in third spot uh, as well. And Daniel Ricciardo was dead last as well, and he came from the clouds. And he finished 13th, but it was a really good drive there by uh, Daniel Ricciardo when no one really predicted him to uh, do quite well. So, he came 13th, uh, so well right done to... Daniel Ricciardo there. All right, it's time for our three famous uh, segments. Uh, Kanan, take it away, mate. Thanks, Blakey. So, um, Doss's Multi is what my segment is. Um, last week, uh, fortunately, the result of the Multi was no good, but I'll just go through it quickly. So, last week, I had Matildas to beat Ireland. That had a green tick. Australia to beat England in the fourth test. Unfortunately, that ended in a draw. Rory McIlroy to finish top 10 at the British Open. He finished in a tied sixth position, so a big green tick there. Um, the Melbourne Storm were upset. upset a, Jesus Christ, what am I saying? The Storm were lost to Newcastle, which was an upset in the NRL. And then Sydney beat Fremantle, so a green tick there. And my hot tip with Davey Warner to score the runs, that got up. So, Doss's multi for this week. Hang around for the socials. This will be posted up on our socials as well. So first leg, Australia will defeat Nigeria in the FIFA Women's World Cup on Thursday night. That one's paying $1.36. Second leg, Travis Head to score over 30 runs in the first innings of the fifth Ashes Test at the Oval. It will get you $1.88. My boys, the Dolphins, will beat Canterbury Bulldogs in the NRL paying at $1.56. Fins up, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Um, the U.S. women will defeat Netherlands in the FIFA Women's World Cup paying at $1.72. Good value there. USA. Uh, where are they ranked, Harry? Number one in the world, mate. Number, Number one. one in the world. So, And then last leg is Richmond to defeat Melbourne in the AFL. A little bit. Of a roughy, not really. Two dollars seventy there, so it's a, it's a Blake roughy. Yeah, it's a Blake roughy that one. Yeah, you put those five into a multi, and it gives you eighteen dollars seventy. So go slap a fiver on that, but always remember to gamble responsibly. And just a little hot tip for me: um, last week's one got up, so we're going to continue it on. This week I'm going to go with uh, it's going to be footy related. But I reckon this man, he's been building on some form lately. You know, he kicked a f- three goals, four on the weekend. But this weekend, I reckon he's going to kick straight. Toby Green to kick five or more goals for the GWS Giants is my hot tip. So I'm going to send it over to Blakey for Blake's Bake and Blakey's Ruffy. Take it away, big fella. Oh, I've been waiting for this uh, segment. The Blake's Bake, is it going to be a hot one straight away? And Harry Keeling, I was not happy with your comments on what that absolute moron, dickhead, wanker, flog, 
Uh, imbecile, piece of shit, that man, Kane Corns. He needs to leave. I'm sorry. Those comments that he made about uh, Hawthorne close to a flag is absolute bullshit. Um, have you seen Richmond's list? Have you seen how many A-graders Richmond have over Hawthorne at the moment? I reckon I can count about six A-graders to Hawthorne. I reckon probably one, which is James Sisley. So that guy's got no brain cells. <laughs> and I think he just wants more clip baits than he's had hot dinners, I reckon, that guy. So he needs to go. <laughs> Same as Caroline Wilson. Get out of this out of their both jobs because they just want to get more ads, more publicity. Everyone wants to know their names because I just they're just driving my head in at the moment. I'm really sorry. So that's my bake of the week. Um there for you. Um and my roughy, I'm gonna go free medal to beat you along. Oh, that's oh, a Jesus. big one. He's Jesus. Bang. I reckon Fremantle. They did it in the pre they did it last year, I think, as well. Fremantle. They came to the Cattery and they beat them there last year. Um but I think um uh, <clears throat> I think uh, yeah, Freo to beach along. Love it, Blakey. Jeez, that's good, Blakey. I love that. Yeah. Over so to my good. session. I had to get a lot of uh words to describe how frustrated I was. On Sunday after we had a big win, and that moron just says what he has to say. Did he um say that on the Sunday footy show? No, he said it on uh the stupid show that no one gives a flying rat's ass about, which is in this round, which I don't think many people watch anyway. So that's probably why he did it. Mm, fair enough. Yeah. Alrighty, I'll get on to what caught my eye this week. So there was a couple of things. I saw an article today about uh both the Japanese team in the Women's uh, World Cup and the fans. Um, and I've seen this at a couple of uh, different events, both at um, Olympic Games, World Championships, stuff like that. Them cleaning up their rooms and making them leave them spotless. It's just something that I think they're brought up with. And then also the fans staying after the game to clean up the stadium and help out the staff. What do you boys think of that? That's incredible. I don't think I've never seen that before. They seem to be known about it, the Japanese people. So I don't know if that's just how they're brought yeah. up or. Usually, you know, when I'll have a, you know, bucket of buddy chips or, you know, a hot dog, I'll just chuck it on the seat. ground, you know, let the security do their job and all that. And usually when I have a beer, I just chuck it and create a beer snake. So uh, half the time, yeah, I just leave it away. So I reckon. Yours wouldn't be pretty big then, Blake. The beer snake is probably only two, <laughs> two, two, two cups long, wouldn't it? Uh, the the uh, boxing day, mate, was pretty full on, mate. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, yeah. no, nah, that that surprised me a bit, Harry, because I can't ima- imagine if someone tried to tell all the Australian fans to clean up after themselves, you'd, they'd be fucking going marble. So. Exactly. So it's just something that caught my eye a little bit. And then my second one was... How many records have already been broken at the World uh, Championships for st- uh, the, what's it called, swimming lately? You've got Ariane Titmus breaking 400 metre. The Australian women's 4x100 broke the world record. And then the longest, well, the, what they say is the longest standing um, world record, Michael Phelps's 400, oh, I think it's 400 metre medley, got broken by a 21-year-old the other day. So a couple of world records coming down. I think there are probably more that I just haven't found, but... Well, we. It's big stuff for uh, swimming coming through. I think we'll touch a bit more on those those games next episode as well. Yeah, we will. Yeah. So, yeah. Anything else, boys, that you want to add uh, before we sign off? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll jump in just quickly, Blakey, before we head off. Um, as I said a few times um, in the episode, Check out our socials. So we have an Instagram page up and running. Thanks to you, Blakey. So yep, you can yep. find us at all sport podcast underscore underscore. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you a story about uh, that. I know it's a long story, but I couldn't believe how many people actually use that name. So that's why I had to do the two underscores for that one. No, that's all right, mate. Um, and another one, if you want to shoot us an email with any um, questions or any um requests for the podcast or if you have any guest speakers that you recommend us getting on because we're putting a few interviews out on uh on seek at the moment for a couple of guest speakers to come on uh, our good podcast so 
You can email us at alltalkwithbthkdossa at gmail.com. And as you said then, Blakey, I couldn't do all talk sporty, sports, so I had to change well, it up. I so. don't know what's, what people actually use like for, for a name like that. So it's pretty interesting. But keep the feed coming, guys. We really appreciate it. You know, you might not think that, but we actually do. You know, we want to get a lot of love and we want to, you know, get a lot of all this sport content that we're reading just so that you don't have to buy the Herald Sun and said you can listen on for us for free and add some, uh, add some comedy in and make you laugh, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been pretty good. And, you know, I prefer to say sometimes, but uh, yeah, so it should be uh, pretty interesting anyway. All righty. Uh, just quickly wraps. before we go. Yep. Sorry, Blakey. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Recording this on a Monday night, so episode will be probably released on Tuesday for those um, wondering. And also you can find the episode on Spotify and we've also got the video up on the YouTube. So make sure you like and subscribe and give the YouTube some love. Make All sure right. you send us DMs. We'll respond to you. Don't worry. We'll give you shout outs if you want. Just send us a couple of DMs and we'll get yeah. back to you or we'll think, talk about it next episode. I think uh, Connor Cogdon walk, uh, Walker said a few couple words. So, uh, thank you as well. Connor, that bloke, that bloke like. can fuck off. He's not coming on this podcast. <laughs> what was that, Mister Excuses? You talking about? Yeah, he talks too much. He, he talks more <laughs> than you, Blake. Uh, I think. I think the worst one he had was the. I know he'll be listening to this, and he does. Is when he had the corky, and he had to go to the hospital. Like, come on, man. That that's just. Unacceptable. I'm really sorry, Connor, if you're listening on. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's enough there. Uh, that wraps up the show. I just want to say, uh, if you're listening on, thank you for listening. Boys, an absolute pleasure yet again on a Monday to start off our week. Uh, it's very good uh, to see. Hopefully, uh, Cadence Multi gets up uh, this week, which would be good because uh, uh, I think you'll be donating a lot of half of your probably paycheck to sports bet. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you again, boys, for joining on. Thanks, Lovely. Thanks, Thanks for us, listening. Blakey. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll catch you soon. No worries. Well, Remember that's to it. Gamble responsibly as well if you're jumping on my multi. Yeah. Well, that's that's it. That wraps us up. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, as Kane said, this episode will probably be coming on Tuesday. Uh, but of course, we'll be back running again. So you get to hear us again. On uh, we pre record this on a Monday and then we go again on a Tuesday. So, thank you, enjoy your footy, enjoy the weekend, and uh, get on the beers. Cheers. <laughs>